Hello friends, welcome back to another awesome day, day 71 of the 100 days of algo trading with Python. In previous sessions, we have learned about the Frick AI and Frick trade. And in this session, we will try to understand the basic configuration of the Frick AI because that is what the most important because as we know that we can quickly start the Frick AI with the help of any single command, but we have to understand the main fundamental concept of the Frick AI then only we'll be able to make some informed decisions, right? So as you can see that this is the config.json file of the Frick AI. So it says a uh, Frick AI is configured through the typical Frick trade config file and the standard Frick trade strategy. Examples of Frick AI config and strategy files can be found in uh, this directory and this uh, strategy. So in previous session, we have downloaded all the config file and the Frick AI's example strategy. So it says that while setting up the configuration file, there are plenty of additional parameters to choose from, but a Frick AI config must at minimum include the following parameters, right? So in order to use the Frick AI, we need to include this code, right? From the, this Frick AI. This should be there at least. So what is the meaning of these uh, different parameters here? Okay, now let's understand these different different parameters of the configuration file. So first of all, we have this enabled is equals to true. So you can make it true or false. It's a Boolean flag, which indicates like whether the Freck AI is active or not, right? So if it is true, then this Freck trade is using the Freck AI uh, feature. If it is false, then it will be not used. Right now we have purge old models is two. It means it controls how many old models to keep stored because we know that Frick AI trains new models regularly uh, based on the fresh data and it can create a lot of models and keeping a lot of old models can waste storage space. So if we set this to two, which means Frick AI will retain only the two most recent models and it will delete the older ones. So like we can adjust as per our needs next is train period days is 30. so the training period refers to the amount of historical data used to train the machine learning models so in this case it means that freaky i will use the past 30 days of data to train the model right and it needs to be long enough to capture meaningful market behavior but not too long that it overfits older so it will be less relevant, right? So it can also be adjusted depending on the strategy and how much historical data is necessary for the accurate predictions. The next is backtest period days, which is seven. This means the number of days of historical data used for backtesting the model after it is trained. So once the training has been done, so it will take the seven days data to backtest, right? And this backtest period evaluates how well the model would have performed if it were the deployed in the past, right? So if it is set to seven, it means that Freak AI will backtest the trained model using the most recent seven days of data, right? It will like use only the last seven days. Then we have identifier, right? So it should be a unique ID and this unique name or string that identifies this specific run or instance of your machine learning model and this is particularly important when managing multiple models let us set those strategies so when we have like multiple models so it becomes very important to keep it unique and whenever you start a new experiment like if you change the model or the feature or the data you should be changing the identifier so that the freak ai doesn't mix different runs next we have is feature parameters right so it will control what data features the machine learning model uses for training and predictions so here in this example we have five minute 15 minute and four hours and because we know that the multiple time frames can help the model better capture short-term and long-term market trends then we have the correlation between different assets per such as like ETH USD, Link USD, and BNB USD, it will improve the prediction, right? And these additional asset pairs can provide useful context to the primary trading pair. Like it will help the model to make more informed decisions based on broader market conditions. Okay, the next is labeled period candles, which is 24. And this defines the number of candles used for labeling which is essentially the time horizon the model looks ahead to determine what the target outcome should be. And in this example, we have, this is 24 candles. 
right so like the model will predict the market movements over the next 24 candles it depends on the time frame so if you have like 5 minute time frame here then it will look for the next 5 minute candles and if it is 15 minutes then it will look for the next 15 minute 24 candles and it will definitely uh, impacts how far i hit the model is predicting so you have to like consider this next we have include shift candles like uh, shift candles are past market data points that help the model understand the sequence of events over time including two shifted candles means that two previous candles will be included as input features for the model and if we use the shifted candles it will help the model to learn from historical patterns or trends next is indicator period candles which is 10 and 20 so like these are the periods used for technical indicators that will be used as features so in this example frick ai will calculate and include indicators that are based on 10 candle and 20 candle patterns which means like uh, for the moving average rsi so it will calculate the moving average for 10 and 20 respectively and similarly it if we have like rsi then it will calculate for the 10 and 20 also so it depends on your strategy and so when it comes to strategy uh, like you can convert all your normal strategies to the frac ai strategy because recently when i was having a session with the one to one sessions with my students then in that we try to convert few strategies to the ai and which work really well so it's completely up to you you have to test like the strategies on the different uh, time frames on the different models and uh, after the thorough testing only you should be deploying these models onto the production level the next is data split parameters and which is here uh, 0.25 which means let's say we have a data which contains 100 rows then it will be uh, used the 25 rows for the test and remaining 75 for the training we can also adjust this as per our need but generally it is okay you can keep this as it is so these were the configuration parameters and like these are the bare minimum you have to use this in your frick ai now let's understand the frick ai strategy so if you have seen my previous videos uh, in that we have learned about a uh, few strategies and these are like the fundamental block are same but in this uh, we have few more methods which we will learn in this session okay so here we have startup candle count which is 20 like it will define the minimum number of candles that strategy needs before it can start functioning it is really necessary because some indicators or features may require several historical candles to calculate their values for example a moving average might need 20 candles to compute and here it is set to 20 meaning that the strategy won't execute any trades or generate signals until at least we have 20 candles right on the relevant time frames have been gathered uh, this ensure that the necessary indicators and features have sufficient historical data for the calculations next block we have is the populate indicators so we know that this is the standard populate indicator method uh, required by all fractured strategies it is used to add technical indicators or features to the data frame which is a table of historical price data and frick ai will also use this method to prepare and augment the data before passing it to the machine learning model for predictions this line is specific to frick ai strategies and it starts the process of preparing data for frick ai's machine learning model because particularly this self dot frick ai dot start it handles several tasks internally let's say it will call the set frick ai targets to create the targets the model will use uh, will try to predict and then it appends any new column including the features and labels define the strategy and it also evaluates whether the model should make a prediction or not based on the features and targets then the data frame is returned and it will have additional columns uh, representing the features the input data and the targets which is the output the model is predicting the next is feature engineering expand all so this is a function designed for automatic feature expansion when frick ai is enabled so the idea here is that you define a feature Uh, for example an indicator like rsi ema etc and the framework will automatically create multiple versions of the features by applying it across different time frames 
so like shifted candles correlated pairs and indicator periods and it will like significantly increase the number of features the model will use to make predictions and it like the more features often help machine learning to capture the complex patterns okay this is like adding the rsi as a feature this line and this percentage at the beginning of the features name indicates that the feature will be used by freak ai and this symbol is a way to tell the system to treat it as an input for the machine learning model right so you have to use this to let the freak ai know that it is a input feature right similarly we have the money flow index as a feature then we have this adx average directional index then also we have this simple moving average and the exponential moving average the next function we have is feature engineering expand uh, basic so like this is another feature engineering function but it's more basic so it will like only expand features based on the time frames shifted candles and the correlated pairs this function is used when you want to like fewer variations of the features to be added but still want to take advantage of the other freak ai settings like it will add the percentage price change of the close price as a feature and it is really useful for the models to detect the momentum or the volatility of the market then we have the raw volume so volume is a key indicator of the market activity so it will help the model goes how strong or weak uh, a price movement is based on the number of trades and then we have raw price so sometimes like simply adding the raw price uh, without any transformation is useful for models as a baseline input for uh, predictions next we have like it is feature engineering standard so this is more customizable feature engineering uh, function so like it is intended for exotic or custom features that do not uh, need to be automatically expanded by freak ai so it is typically used for features that you want to calculate only once without duplications across uh, time frames or shifted candles right and this function is called last in the feature engineering process which means like all previous features have already been added to the time frame so for example this will add a feature representing the day of the week so the values will be normalized to a value between 0 and 1 and sometimes it's useful because uh, certain feature patterns in trading behavior can emerge depending on the day of the week right example like higher volatility on mondays and uh, fridays so it is quite useful sometimes next we have this win hour of the day so it is also normalized to a value between 0 and 1 and it helps the model detect any intraday patterns such as a uh, different market behavior during morning or afternoon sessions next we have is set freak ai targets so this is required function for freak ai enable strategies and it defines the target the machine learning model will try to predict and we know that uh, all the targets in freak ai must be prepended with ampersand this and right which help distinguish targets from features so we know that uh, in the features we have here percentage and for the targets we have here the is ampersand now what is happening here that this is the actual target that freak ai will try to predict right it is defined as the percentage price change of the close price after a certain number of candles and the number of candles i had to shift is determined by the label period candles right okay this rolling would mean uh, it will this part will ensure that the model is looking at the average price over the next several candles uh, rather than just the price at the single point and it will help smooth out the noise in the data and the final target is the percentage difference between the uh, future average price and the current price which is normalized between minus 1 to 1 so it will like allow the model to learn the expected price change in the future and make predictions uh, based on that so this was the like basic introduction of this like the configuration and the strategy and in the upcoming videos we will try to make our own strategies and you can also let me know what you want to learn in the upcoming sessions and also if you want you can connect with me on the one to one sessions and uh, yeah that's it for the day and i will see you in the next session until then bye bye take care have a nice day